amazing to me that just recently I was listening to a gentleman, or I should say reading, reading a gentleman commenting on modern technology and the computer, and basically the evils of it, you know, how wicked it was and how it's influencing society and changing the world and making things so bad. And I often smile when people do that because usually they're commenting on a computer from their computer after reading things on their computer in order to understand that it's so corrupting they have to be able to see what that corruption is so they participated in that corruption so their evaluation seems to be a little distorted because they were in the corruption in order to understand that there was corruption on the computer that they're saying is so bad because they were looking at the bad part of what you could look at on the computer and I thought well that's not unlike people blaming something that's neutral for a problem they have with themselves because on a computer you could be looking at the Bible <laughs> you could be reading scripture you could be studying you could be learning you could be visiting you could be exhorting one another encouraging one another you could be in contact with someone around the world you could be building up the body of Christ you could be sharing Jesus you know with someone you don't even know and even be in touch with your loved ones that you do know and even have church and have you know interconnectivity because now we do have two-way communication with you know vid phones and you can have instant you know communication where you're connecting and sharing and so he's telling me about how bad it was and I thought man I wonder if they did the same thing about television when it came out and the same thing about radio you know it just amazed me that they can take something and rather than look for the good in it or to put the good in it they choose to see only bad you know, Jesus said something about that. He said that, you know, if you're looking at darkness and constantly looking at darkness, then how great is the darkness within? Because, to put it bluntly, if you keep looking at only how bad things are, the only thing you're going to see is how bad things are. I mean, I'm not trying to make it sound like a power of positive thinking, but there is a certain amount of truth to it. What you see is what you get. <laughs> it's, hey, if you're looking for you know, something wrong, well, you'll keep looking until you find it. But if you're looking to see what's right, you know, it's pretty easy to find it because then you can thank God for it and rejoice in it. And I think that's what God wanted us to do in that. In James, it talks about count it all joy when we fall into diverse trials and tribulations, knowing that the working of our faith produces patience. But let patience have its perfect work, that the man of God might be fully equipped. And I keep thinking about that, you know, at different times of my life as I observed all the different ramifications of what people try to tell me. Don't do this, don't do that, do this, do that, do that, you know, go here, go there. And all that they keep trying to tell everyone else to do when they don't do what they are telling others to do. And I try to bring that up once in a while, you know, about, hey, you know, if you're telling someone else not to do something, shouldn't you not do it then? Or if you're telling someone to do something, shouldn't you do it yourself? I mean, I don't know how to say it any more politely, but I think that Christianity has become hypocrisy because, frankly, it's more about hypocrites telling hypocrites what not to do and to do than it is what they're doing. Well, I guess that's why we need grace and mercy more than we need people telling each other what to do and what not to do. You know, it's funny, too, because I, I see always in sharing and conversation how quickly people turn things that could be used to reach out as a bridge to you or to me to walk across it to communicate and they take it quickly and they turn it around and make it into something that's about me and I and focusing in on themselves as opposed to reaching out to others when it's so simple I mean they literally could be taking some circumstance and using it 
for the gospel's sake. Because Jesus, or Jesus, Paul said that, I have learned in every situation whatsoever state I am to therewith be content, so that way that he could become all things to all men, by any means that some might be saved, so that he could reach out to every single circumstance in his life and see that there's some good in it that God is using in order to bring about possibly the salvation of another soul or someone to understand Jesus in a more personal and intimate way than they've ever known before. Now, I don't know about you, but personally, I kind of look at my life the same way. What can be turned to looking at God in a more intimate, real way? And when I work on my deck and I take plants that don't look like they're going to recover and restore them, I get lessons from God in them and how he deals with me in the same way that I deal with others, that I need to see them as possibly maybe they need a little more water or a little more light, that not all plants are the same, so maybe they need to be moved indoors or maybe they need to outdoors or maybe they need less light or who knows, maybe some different soil. And in all of those things, as I perceive them, as I make them real in my life, I see the hand of God working on me to work through me to touch other people in a personal way because everyone wants to be loved. I mean, that's the bottom line is that they want to be accepted. You know, they, even the ones that are very highly critical and go out there and try to, you know, cut everybody up into a certain way that they want them to be, they want to be loved and accepted because that's really what they're doing when they're legalistic. They're just trying to conform people into an image that they think they want to be that they can't be because they don't measure up by their own standard to the things that they're telling others to do so unfortunately they can't live up to that idealism so they force it on others in order to try to make them do what they themselves cannot do and you know it's part of human nature i guess you know even they just want to be accepted and loved so i think that you know, when you get down to it, love is the key and seems to be the answer to all a man's circumstances and situation. And since man in and of himself cannot love like God loves, and that we think we understand what love is and we haven't ever demonstrated it in our own personal lives in any way, shape, or form, then I would have to say that, you know, maybe if we had God's love, if God is alive in us, that we could go ahead and do and minister to others in that same kind of love, and you know, maybe, just maybe the circumstances of our life would be used to touch someone who's going through the same circumstances that we are. Maybe God brings those things into our life in order to bring out of us something that he wants to give to someone else. Pressed out of measure, that the power of Christ may rest upon me. God allowed the crisis to close around Jacob on the night when he bowed at Peniel in supplication to bring him to the place where he could take hold of God as he never would have done. And from that narrow pass of peril, Jacob became enlarged in his faith and knowledge of God and in the power of a new and victorious life. God had to compel David by a long and painful discipline of years to learn the almighty power and faithfulness of his God and grow up into the established principles of faith and godliness, which were indispensable for his glorious career as the king of Israel. Nothing but the extremities in which Paul was constantly placed could ever have taught him and taught the church through him the full meaning of the great promise he so learned to claim, my grace is sufficient for me. And nothing but our trials and perils that we are going through would ever have led some of us to know him as we do or to trust him as we have and to draw from him the measures of grace from which our extremities have made indispensable for it is by grace that we are saved. Difficulties and obstacles are great are God's challenges to faith. When hindrances confront us in the path of duty, we are to recognize them as vessels for faith to fill with the fullness and all sufficiency of Jesus. And as we go forward, simply and fully trusting him, we may be tested and we may have to wait and let patience have her perfect work. But we shall surely find that the last stone rolled away and the Lord waiting to render it to us double for our time of testing. For that with which he has gone through 
he has already endured so that we would be able to go through that which we are going through so that we would be able to endure that which we have to do in order for God to work out his salvation through us so that we would rest not in our own strength and capabilities but that our sufficiency and our ability would come from God as we share God to people who may be in the same boat, the same extremities, the same circumstances, the same problems and issues that maybe they don't have the answer, but as they see you not at a loss, but rather at a confidence in what you're going through, then they want to know why you have peace and they don't.